Hey everyone, Charlie here. Welcome back to One Cup of Japan. It's the show where we have a conversation over something good that suits you. Uh, today we are walking once again in Sabai City. We're walking in a different part than we were in the last episode. It is a beautiful, beautiful night. This little alleyway behind me here, this little side street, is like one of my favorite streets in all of Japan. Uh, you can't tell from this angle so much, but as you walk up this street, and you see like the railroad crossing signs. Mm. Beautiful. Uh, today, for those of you who are interested, we are drinking some green tea. This is uh, one of the more common brands you will find here, Ayataka. A little bit stronger uh, green tea flavor than you otherwise might find. Uh, today, we're gonna head to the park as we talk about our topic and sip on our tea. Ah, warm and yummy. I have a feeling I'm gonna strip off this coat here pretty quick because it is. A little toasty. Uh, <clears throat> today what I want to talk about, I'm not actually trying to talk so quietly, but there's a, there's a frog in my throat. Uh, today what I want to talk about is uh, intercultural uh, dating. Um, I have been, uh, <laughs> I want to think about how to, I want to choose my words carefully here. Oh, this is a cool visual with these, uh, this fork behind me here. Um, I want to choose my words carefully here. Um, I have dated um, a number of women here, the Japanese women here, and uh, also foreign women since I've moved here. I've been here six years, so that's a normal thing, I think. I don't know why I'm concerned about what people think about my dating life, but anyway. Um, and uh, I have been with the same person now for, for two and a half years. Uh, with... Uh, Plenty of ups and downs, but that's how it goes. Um, and one of the things that I have started to think about, there's an old fellow here who's giving me the eye, a photographer. One of the things I've started to think about is of uh, like in an intercultural relationship, whose culture wins? Now I phrase it that way simply because I don't know what better way to phrase it as we head into the park here. Of course, it's not a competition. Um, but as I say, I'm at a lack for words. Let's head into this park and let's get past this gentleman. And then we can continue on our way. It really is a beautiful day. Let's get past this gentleman so I'm making sure I'm not putting him on camera. I'll show you this guy in this park behind me here. So, uh, yeah, this idea of like, ooh, whose culture wins in a relationship. Here's the park behind me here. Okay, let's be careful of our, of our feet here because apparently it's easy to slip. So here's a little bit of a pond here. In, I don't know, maybe a month or so, this will be all uh, bloomed with cherry blossoms. That area up there with the trellis uh, over here will uh, also be bloomed out with a flower whose name escapes me, but it is a vine flower. Oh God, what's it called? Wisteria, I think. Um, but anyhow, um, as I say, this idea of sort of like cultural mixing is not actually um, unique to people who are dating from different uh, ethnic or national backgrounds, right? Uh, not at all, in fact, uh, because of the fact that everybody, even if they're from the same macro culture, right? Everybody has their own, has their own micro culture, um, right? Maybe in your house, uh, for example, it's a really stupid example, but I don't know why, but it's, it's the one that, that, that came to my head first, right? Uh, maybe in your family, people, um, like, like crazed savages, uh, squeeze out their toothpaste from the bottom of the tube, uh, the part closest to the nozzle, where in other households, people squeeze from the top of the tube, the part farthest from the nozzle, like civilized human beings. This park, as you can see, is so green. The moss covering on everything is really beautiful. I'll get my stupid face out of the way. Um, you know, and so um, that's just to say that no matter what, there's going to be some kind of a mixing and possibly even clashing of the cultures. Now this is beautiful. This is really beautiful. And this is a little 
footbridge native boulders that we're going to walk across now. Ooh, <laughs> so I fall on my ass. Um, let's watch our feet here. Um, but of course that becomes, that kind of idea becomes magnified when you are with somebody who speaks a different language, um, who is from a completely different national background, that kind of thing. Um, and I guess it's something I've been thinking about recently, uh, a lot more recently as I've been, um, coming to terms with, uh, the upcoming move and, and marriage and all that kind of thing. Now, when I say coming to terms, I want to point out that that's not a negative thing. I just mean, no matter how happy you are about something, there's going to be some changes that come with it. And that's something you have to be okay with within yourself. So that's all I mean, is making sure that I'm okay with things. And, uh, hello, toilet sign. Strange person. Uh, but it's something I've been thinking about recently. Um, because, of course, if you're going to be with somebody in the long term, there are things that you're going to have to... You're going to have to choose your battles, right? In other words, there are things that you're going to have to be okay with. There are things that you're going to have to put your foot down over on that kind of thing. Ooh. It's to, it's to prove the point from the previous one, Kappa. Uh, these stairs are killing me. Slowly but surely, but boy, if it isn't beautiful here. Um, you know. And uh, as I've been sort of doing this like evaluative process and sort of uh, thinking about, okay, what things do I need to, do I need to let go? What things do I need to, to have a conversation over, um, have a conversation about? Um, I came to this idea of, right, <laughs> no matter what, somebody's culture is going to be the dominant culture in your relationship, I think. Now, again, this is only limited to my experience here. So this is a best analogous, not, not analogous, that's, that's completely the wrong word. What is that word? Anecdotal. It's at best anecdotal, so please take it for what it is. Let's see if you can see Sabai back that way. It's where we were in the last episode. That down there is an elementary school. They're still closed, and they will be for the next month partly because of their planned spring break and because of the corona outbreak. Um, and so thinking about this in my own situation, it became quite obvious that in my relationship, Japanese culture um, is the dominant culture. Um, I imagine probably it's because we live here and because we have constant contact with with uh, her family and the mutual friends and stuff like that who live within the culture. And it is my desire to fit into those situations as much as possible. And so subconsciously, and also sometimes consciously, I make efforts to, to uh, you know, do as the Romans do, so to speak. Just another lovely view, I think. God, I hate being out of shape. I hate this so much. <sighs> anyway, let's open our jacket because I am a toasty boy. I'm rosy in the cheeks. <laughs> wheeze, wheeze. Um, and so, of course, it's not just like uh, in the image or whatever that we project to, uh, project in our social interactions with family and friends and that kind of thing. It also comes home. So, one of the things I've really noticed about myself is how much more anal I am about um, cleanliness, or at least perceived cleanliness. Uh, I think, for example, <laughs> like when I was living in the States, I would, I would never have bought like wet wipes or even paper towels or, or anything like that. I find the idea of them kind of ridiculous. Like, why would you use paper towels when you can use cloth towels that you can just wash over and over and over again? Um, right? Uh, why would you buy wet wipes when you can make a cleaning solution and then again use those cloth towels that you can just wash over and over again? Right? Like I found the whole idea like kind of ridiculous and wasteful and that kind of thing. But um, even if you wash something, there's like this idea where like for example, right, there's, there's, the, there's the dish drying towel there's the hand drying towel. There's like the there's the there's a the towel used to wipe the counter, and even if they're washed, they're not interchangeable. 
right? There's the idea that they're sort of permanently soiled because they were used for a certain purpose, and so they should continue to be used for that certain purpose. And also that there's like this idea of, uh, of roles, right? Of a thing has its role and it's always gonna have that role, and so we need, to, we need to use it as such. Right, which is one thing that I found myself uh, doing more now. It's like, okay, well clearly, uh, I'm sorry, but you, you cannot use my, my dish drying towel to dry your hands, you fool, kind of thing, you know? Uh, I don't know. Here is, again, this will be all quite white and pink here in a couple weeks. Looks like maybe there's some plum blossoms or an early blooming variety of soccer over there. We've got some people coming, so we want to be careful here. Um, and so that's one thing. Um, another thing that I found I've become more concerned with is kind of the form of things. Now, I don't think it's any secret to anybody that American people by and large, do not care so much about form as much as we do about function. So, let's see, what's an example? Well, I don't know, but when I was a kid, my, my father even now is really, really, um, really kind of a handyman, you know, he builds a lot of things for himself out of wood, he sells, he sells them to you online, and, uh, you know, when he's selling them, of course, I'm sure it's different, he's worried about form and function, but, um, for example, if he was building something for the house or he was making some kind of improvement to, for lighting or something like that in the house when I was a kid, right, I can remember basically the attitude being like, well, it works. <laughs> so, so like, you know, that's all we really need to worry about. I'm not really concerned about it looking pretty and that kind of thing. Speaking of looking pretty, this is a lovely place here as we walk across a stone pathway again. My stupid head is in the way. It really is a beautiful park here. Um, so anyway, the idea that function is more important than form, I think is kind of a, of course it's not exclusively American, but it is far more American than it is Japanese, I would say. And um, it's something I've come across in my work too, where like people more often, well, it's not always, but a lot of times people are more concerned with the appearance of, of uh, quality or appearance of goodness, so to speak. I don't know if anybody's down here. Um, right? The idea of form over function. And so you'll spend like, <laughs> like I design all of like the, the marketing materials for my company. And, um, you know, it gets the information across perfectly. Um, right? Today the school is closed. Uh, see you next time, kind of thing. Um, you know, why is the school closed? Maybe I'll have a reason or something like that on there. Um, but on the, I'm gonna give it to the school manager to do like a, to do like an edit to make sure that she thinks it's okay. <laughs> They'll be like, she'll think the text is like a millimeter off. It's it's not it's not quite in in the right place by a millimeter, and so I go and correct it. And then um, now it's off a millimeter in this direction, and then they go and correct it again. This, by the way, is a tea house. Uh, they don't always have ceremonies here. Um, basically during events and stuff like that and also it's closed you can see maybe there's a piece of paper on the door I'm not neat I bet my bottom dollar that that, 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 that sign over there is a notice about corona what's going on this person is okay I can't even understand what they're saying Terrifying. Uh, but anyway, I find that if there's anything I want to teach people um, here, if there's anything I can pass on, I think, from my own culture, it's not that form should be unimportant, but it's like this idea of not letting perfect be the enemy of the good. And I think that's just, that's just sometimes that which happens so much here. Um, and while I am still more obsessed with function, I still find myself getting pissed if somebody's making me focus on like a completely, oh, let's get past here. People are, people are worshiping. Um, what's I saying? I, I find myself, uh, of course I'm much more concerned with function and I find myself getting angry if people are 
uh, focus me, uh, forcing me to focus on like really superficial parts of a project or something like that. Uh, I do find myself understanding some of the importance of focusing on form a little bit more. Um, and that's in all things like, like in the words I choose, um, in the way I present myself to family and friends and that kind of thing, the, even, even the way I decorate my apartment and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't know. So I, I, think, I think that uh, oppositely, maybe that's true of my partner, like realizing that maybe you don't need to focus on function too much. Ohayou gozaimasu. Make sure I'm not capturing this gentleman in our video. Um, and, I, and I think, uh, as I say, maybe, maybe she's dyed a little bit more in, uh, in my colors too, in, in that regard of realizing that maybe it's more important for something to work than for it to look good kind of thing all the time. But I think as a general rule, let's get over here so we're not in the way of these people. Let's show you this area here. We're gonna go over to this park. You can see there's a building on top of the mountain over there that's actually howler monkeys and red pandas and that kind of thing living in there. I was a person who was not afraid of the perfume bottle. Um, and you know, um, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, why necessarily it's it's become the case that uh, uh, functionally um, Japanese culture is far more dominant in my relationship. Ohayou gozaimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. Make sure that I'm not showing these gentlemen here. We're gonna cross a bridge, so we're gonna have to do this a lot. <laughs> Let's go actually go over here and stand until everybody is passed, maybe. Um, as I say, I think it's probably about proximity to the culture. All right, so there's Subai City. Over there, there's like a playground area. Uh, down below there, the kind of area with all like the yellowed grass is, uh, is a park. There's a lot of kids playing down there today, looks like. So, um, let's take a, take a moment here. And I think, um... Hayou gozaimasu. I think certainly it's a conversation that you need to have with, with your partner. Because I like, there have been moments where I've been, uh, I guess, a little bit afraid to have the conversation. Because I, uh, generally speaking, I'm not pro uh, confrontation these days. Uh, these days, you know. Um, but there have been moments where I've been like, listen, uh, like where we have, we've had conversations where I've, I've really wanted to like, say something to like an old person who's being like a dick to me or something like that. And of course I won't, but then afterwards I'll say something to my partner and she'll be like, okay, well, this is Japan and you need to act as such. And my response, a lot of the times, especially if it's at, at like something like the way we'll do things at home, my response a lot of the times is like, uh, out there is Japan. Here is basically, is basically a new third country made by uh, American and Japanese founders kind of thing. So there needs to be rules that kind of reflect that. And I think that's been an important conversation to have. Um, and it's almost, it's almost the same way that I treat, treat my classroom. Because sometimes you'll have kids come in and they'll say like, okay, well, this is Japan. I don't understand why I need to speak, why I need to speak English. I don't understand why I need to speak English and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm like, well, out there is Japan, and here is, is little America kind of thing, you know. And um, <coughs> I, I think, um, to be honest, there's a lady who's booking it. You can see the park down there, some kids running around kicking a soccer ball. That is a beautiful visual, isn't it? Let's get my head out of the way. Wow, pretty pretty. Let's try to... Ugh. I wonder if I'm taking pictures or not. I just think I am. It's really pretty down there. Um, and, hmm, what to say? I think the extent to which you're gonna be dyed in the, in the colors of your partner, so to speak, and maybe this is true of any relationship, um, but since we're talking about intercultural relationships, um, is about, well, of course it's about the situation, but I also think it's about your, your background a little bit. So. I, 
for those of you who who I've met and who have become my friends through this channel for instance I think uh, <laughs> I've been told in some ways that I'm so American right probably probably in the words that I choose and like um, mannerisms my tendency towards random outbursts my unfortunate tendency to uh, probably think I'm right more than more than I actually am um, but in other ways I don't think I've ever really been the stereotypical American person um, and so coming and part of that was you know that was a lot of the reason why I came here is I just didn't feel like I fit um, as well as Maybe, for example, my older brother fits, or, or my friends fit, or something like that. And that is in no way, of course, a slight to them. It just, um, you know, it is what it is. And so I think, I think maybe when I was living by myself, and I was... Ooh, that's some slippery moss. <laughs> when I was living by myself, or... Uh, living by myself and really I was just more dating than having like a we want to switch this because I want you to see these these old behind me here these uh there's like a line of statues running up along this road here called Jizo and they're meant to be like a, they're meant to be like a harbingers of safe travel kind of thing harbingers not the right word deities of safe travel, I guess. Um, anyway, we're not going to go up this mountain because I don't, I just, I just don't have the energy for it. What was I saying? Oh, some young folks are coming. So I just want to get past these people before we start talking again. So, anyhow, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, looks like the local high school running team kind of thing. Uh, so trying to say, let's make sure we're not in the way of this lady here. Um, God, I've really lost my train of thought, haven't I? Talking about culture and ah, okay. So when I was living by myself and um, wasn't really dating anybody too seriously, that kind of thing. It was much more. Uh, it was a lot easier, of course, right, just to keep my own culture. Like, I would go home and, you know, immediately that became 100% like America, like tiny America, right? Like in, in the foods that were on the shelves and and uh, in the way I approached my day and everything else like that was very much like, uh, you know, like I would have done back home, except if I walked out my door, it wasn't home kind of thing. When I say home, I mean, I mean where I'm from, right? Um, but... I guess maybe one of the things that really, really drove home how much I had been dyed in my partner's um, colors, again, I keep saying that, but was when we went home to, not, not even the colors, but the, but the culture, right? Adopting, adopting her culture um, and assimilating to some degree was when I went home in December and I, I longed for things that, that weren't... Um, that weren't, you can hear the holler monkeys in the background here, um, that weren't, um, I became homesick for things that, that weren't from my, my original culture, right? And, um, uh, for instance, like, I found myself just really, really wanting Japanese food. Um, and we actually brought a big bag of, like, instant miso with us. And then I found myself really, really longing for American customer service. And I found myself really, really longing for, Jap uh, excuse me, Japanese customer service. And that kind of thing. And, um, you know, Japanese public transport. But also just, just the way people talk to each other in, in conversation and things like that. And, and how the house, uh, like just, just some of the rules when you walked in the house, like taking off your shoes and... And even the way you take a bath and this kind of thing. And so I really realized at that point, like, oh, wow, I've really kind of absorbed a lot of this. Um, 
and even like I found myself longing for Japanese to some respect because effectively my my professional life is in English but my personal life is almost a hundred percent in Japanese um, and you know so yeah you know I don't know if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing I think I think if it was not like this kind of situation and you told people how much you took on from like your your partners lifestyle or your or their culture or something like that people would say stupid shit like oh boy you're so whipped or something like that right like that that kind of juvenile crap that i never got got my head around um but um yeah even 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 like the way i speak right um before <laughs> before i started dating my partner i had very like well first of all my, my language ability was a lot worse just because i didn't speak nearly as much as i do now um but a very standard, very, very standard Japanese. All right, let's go this way. There's too many kids. We're going to go back. We're almost done with our cuppa anyway. Um, very, very standard Japanese. Maybe with a very slight hint of Nagoya dialect because of my time there as an exchange student. If we look up here, by the way, you can just barely see the top. That's where the red pandas are. But there's going to be a lot of kids up there. I wanted to take you to see them today. But I won't. there's going to be a lot of kids up there. And so I don't want to cause any trouble. And... Uh, when I say cause trouble, I mean, you know, cause a disturbance, but also uh, the editing headache that would be to block out all the faces and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> probably, unless, unless I'm in a meeting and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, consciously aware and consciously choosing how I speak, uh, my dialect now is so, is so fukui, like, countryside dialect um that is crazy you know and it's something people will say is like well you you speak fukui dialect and i'm like yeah um well i've been here for a while and even even my partner will say it to me like she'll laugh because i speak like such fukui bank <laughs> and i'm like you know better than anybody how long i've been here and like you're you are the cause for this kind of thing you know so anyway as we finish up our cuppa Perfume lady's back. <laughs> Let's hope I'm upwind. Uh, perfume lady's back. And I don't want to show you to her. Uh, show her to you. So let's go ahead and sit down here for a second. Maybe, yeah, I guess we'll... Ooh, as I slip and fall on my ass, that's embarrassing in front of perfume lady. <laughs> See you, my stand. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right. Well was an unfortunate uh, interaction caused by the pooch or caused by me being ugly <laughs> and and uh you know inspiring feelings of terror in that pooch <coughs> but anyhow as we end this episode here our, our cuppa is like you know we've got a millimeter left of tea in here or something like that i would love to hear about your own experience if you are in uh, intercultural interracial international whatever inter sort of marriage you're into, uh, except for inner species. Uh, not a supporter of that, gotta say. Uh, please, yeah, tell me what is the dominant culture? Is it yours or is it your partner's? Why do you think it, it's become that way? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Let me know down in the comments below. Get at me on Twitter at C Hayward Jr. Also, please check out my Patreon at C Hayward Jr. Lots of interesting uh, bonus stuff going up over on there for uh, patrons. Thank you to Andrew Johnson, who is our, our current sole patron and our first patron. I really appreciate that. And uh, I will see you guys all next time. Cheers.